So it's seven o'clock and I'm gonna call the meeting to order. Um, Kate. So as a pre preliminary matter, this is Dr. Burnham, Superintendent of Schools. I will do a roll call to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Chairperson Troca? Yes. Vice Chairperson Bertrand? Yes. Secretary Leighton? Yes. Mr. Levesque? Yes. Mrs. Alshambo? Yes. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Recording Secretary, Ms. Sue Summers? Yes. Business Manager, Mr. Michael Cassidy? Yes. Director of Special Services, Juliana Hanscom? Yes. Mr. Rob McGrath, LHS Principal? Do we see Mr. McGrath? Yeah, him, but now he's off. He's off now. He's here. He's well, can't, he can't unmute his, his audio. Okay. Um, Mr. Tim Santry, principal at the middle school. Yes. Annika Scott, assistant principal at LMHS. Yes. Mrs. Heidi Champagne, Turkey Hill Elementary School principal. Where is she? She's here. She's here. She was there. She was here. Oh, I, I'll call Mr. McGrath's name again. Mr. McGrath? Oh, he's got an issue with sound tonight. Wow. <laughs> okay, he should be unmuted. Looks like I just coming back in. He's, he's talking. He's muted again. <laughs> yeah, the audio doesn't seem, and then it goes right to mute. Yeah. So let me call Mrs. Champagne again. Yes, I'm here. Oh, there she is. Okay. Mrs. Christina Gurton, primary school principal. Yes. Mr. Chad Adams, Turkey Hill and primary school assistant principal. Yes. Mrs. Amy Raboyne, LMHS teacher. Yes. And Mrs. Dawn Guerin, LHS teacher. Yes. Yeah, okay. I'll turn that over now to the chair. Uh, good evening. In accordance with the requirements of open meeting law, please be advised that this meeting is being recorded and will be broadcast over the Lunenburg Public Access Channel at a later date and that this meeting of the Lunenburg School Committee is being conducted remotely. The Town of Lunenburg, in response to the COVID-19 coronavirus, is currently following the guidance from the Lunenburg Board of Health, Massachusetts Department of Public Health, and the CDD, CDC require regarding the virus and steps communities can take to prevent the spread, and all town facilities are currently closed to the public. In accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GLC 30A subsection 20, all public meetings are being conducted remotely. The order, which you can find posted on the town website on the COVID-19 Information Center page, accessed through the town manager's webpage, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so as long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment. For this meeting, the Lunenburg School Committee is convening by telephone conference, video conference via Zoom app, as posted on the town's website identifying how the public may join. For Zoom meetings, please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. According, accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and that take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Meeting business ground rules. We are now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I, Heather Sroka, the chair, will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions until your name is called. Further, please remind, remember to mute your phone Your name 
before speaking. If members wish to engage in colloquy with other members, please do so through the chair. Take care to identify yourself. For items with public comment, after members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment as follows. The chair will ask first ask members of the public who wish to speak, identify their names and address only. Once the chair has a list of all public commentators, I will call on each by name and afford three minutes for any comments. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by a roll call vote. I hope everyone is feeling well. Um, and we're just gonna go into public comment for agenda items only. Do we have any public comment from the public? I'm looking. I don't see any public comment. Do you see any public comment? I do not. No. Oh. No. Oh, okay. We have minutes to review that everyone should have received from our last meeting. You take a look at them from members. Where did you take a look at them? Yes. 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 Yeah. Did any? Do you have any questions? Corrections? Did they look good? I can take a motion. Ooh. Well, Beck, I will I, make I, a motion to accept the minutes. Second. This is Wendy Bertrand, second. And the minutes are from April 7th, correct? April 8th, it says. April 8th, okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry. April 8th, okay. Um, all in favor, all right. we need a roll call vote. Mr. Levac? Yes. Mr. Leighton? Yes. Mrs. Ashambo? Yes. Mrs. Bertrand? Yes. Mrs. Shoka? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. The superintendent's report, I believe, is going to feature all of this, this these principles, correct? No, they are a separate um, agenda item this evening. Oh, oh, that's it, the bottom. Okay. All right, superintendent's report. I do have a few brief updates. Um, okay. Regarding testing. All spring 2020 MCAS tests have been canceled. Advanced placement tests will be administered remotely online and the high school guidance department will be coordinating that. The seal of biliteracy will also be administered remotely online and our LMHS foreign language department will be coordinating that. Um, an update on the Student Opportunity Act. We are awaiting further information regarding the new submission of our Student Opportunity Act plans. You recall that the original date by, um, by statute was April 1st. Um, we've been advised that it will not be before May 15th, but it may be a date later than May 15th and we're awaiting additional information from the commissioner on that. Additionally, I would just like to uh, note that there's a possibility that the first year funding of the Student Opportunity Act, which would be FY21, um, may, may be up in the air at this point. Um, we'll have to wait and see what the, what the new budget coming from, from the state looks like. Um, drive. Our Lunenburg Public Schools is continuing to provide lunch and breakfast to our low-income families uh, through our grab-and-go program. And I would just like to take a moment to thank our food services director, Nadine Lorenzen, and our entire food service staff for organizing and implementing this program that's going so well. Um, the district has also maintained a partnership with Kylie's Care Kids for Kids which provides weekend meals and those kits are still being distributed on Fridays. Um, some of our staff have coordinated a food gift card drive. I'd like to thank Katie Berry, the middle school secretary and Katie McGuire, the middle school nurse for taking the lead on this project to support students and families. There will be a drive through donation drop off this Friday, April 17th from one o'clock to three o'clock at the Pasios building. We are seeking donations of gift cards for area grocery stores or local restaurants that deliver food. Um, Hannaford also offers online gift cards. So if that's an easier uh, way for folks to donate, 
they may purchase an online um, gift card through Hannaford and email that gift card to either Katie McGuire at kmcguire at lunenbergonline.com or Katie Berry, that's cberry at lunenbergonline.com. And they will make sure that the gift cards are provided to the families that we know are in need of some assistance uh, right now. And lastly, the FY21 budget. Um, we've had a conversation with the town manager and um, she's requested that we put together a level service budget. So we are currently working to develop that budget. And as soon as we have something on that, we will um, bring it to you. And that's all I have for the updates. Okay, thank you. Um, so first item of the business is the pre-K tuition adjustment. Correct. So I will unmute Mr. Cassidy, hopefully. <laughs> there he is. Hello, Mr. Cassidy. Good evening, everyone. Uh, there is uh, a matter that I'd like to bring to the, uh, the attention of the school committee. A number of parents uh, have uh, reached out to the primary school st uh, administrative staff uh, inquiring about an adjustment to the, uh, the, the primary school tuition. Uh, this uh, affects 12 families in Lunenburg. And uh, we took a look at uh, a proposed adjustment that the school committee would have to approve tonight. Uh, what we are uh, recommending to the school committee is that, uh, that we look at uh, uh, the, the, the quarterly or the annual payment and we uh, adjust the payment uh, between a week and a week and a half uh, for those families that have been enrolled for the entire year. That essentially uh, is a refund or a rebate uh, to families uh, of $40 per week. So it can vary from family to family depending whether or not they're a two-day uh, enrollment or a three-day enrollment. So that's why we're adjusting it to, to a one and a half week uh, per family. So uh, one challenge that we'll have is three of the 12 families uh, did uh, pay in full already. So we will have to issue a refund uh, to, to those three families. And, and what I'm recommending is that we issue a, a reduction of a week and a half for, for the other nine. So uh, if you have any questions on that, uh, uh, let me know. Otherwise, um, I, I, uh, a motion needs to be set to, to kind of adjust those um, those families. So it's 12 families, a one and a half week period. So what is the total amount of money? I've calculated it to be about $467 of, of lost revenue. And, okay. and why do we, we, we came up to, with that week and a half? Uh, it, there was uh, some of the snow days, and the um, uh, there was kind of a, that closure period between the last day of school and the when we actually did the uh, start of the enrichment program. So we want to be fair. The April. Yeah. Okay. And. Um, well, they, 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 the, the, the pre-K program did uh, provide some enrichment and they're doing the on, um, online learning for the, uh, the, uh, the pre-K students right now. So we want to give them a little adjustment for that. It, it, um, but that's how we came up with that okay. week, week and a half. Okay. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Cassidy? No. No? No. No. Okay. All right. Wendy, no? No. Okay. Okay, so I need a motion to approve that um, price adjustment for the fa the 12 families in regards to the pre credit program. This is Jim Levesque. I'm going to make a motion to make that adjustment to the 12 families for the pre-K tuition. Fine, Layton, second. 
All in favor, roll call vote. Mr. Levesque? Aye. Mr. Leighton? Yes. Mrs. Archambo? Yes. Mrs. Bertrand? Yes. Mrs. Shoka? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, old, thank you, Mr. Cassidy. Um, the old business is the spring field trips. Um, we're going to be talking about DC first, I believe. Yes. So let me um, unmute Mrs. Ramoyne and Mr. Santry. Okay. And in regard to that vote, I have a question because I have an eighth grade student. Should I not participate in the vote? I would suggest yes, uh, that you not participate in the vote. Okay. It could be perceived as a conflict. Right. So I'll abstain from just the vote, but I can participate in asking questions, correct? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Just so everyone knows, I won't be participating in that vote. Okay, so we're going to turn it over to who, Mr. Santry? Well, uh, Amy, <clears throat> Amy? Amy and I have uh, been working closely okay. with this, uh, so Amy's going to start off, and then we can fall in afterwards. If that's okay, Chair. Yep. Yep. Okay, so I've been in contact with Mrs. Merchant quite a bit about the trip, and last time we got together, there were three potential options, and one of them was to wait it out and see what happened. I don't think there's any reason to delay a decision any further because we're at the point right now where most of the penalties have been waived and the few penalties that still remain, Mrs. Merchant says are small enough that she can cover. So if we were to cancel the trip right now, um, the parents would get back all of the money that they've paid except for their initial deposit of $250. Um, it's going to take time to get that money back to parents because Mrs. Merchant has to wait to be reimbursed the money and to, before she can hand it out to families. So her plan, if this was the decision, is to reimburse based on the order that people sent in their original deposit. So the first 10 families who signed up would be the first 10 families to get reimbursed and so on. Um, but that process could take um, weeks and it could take up to a couple of months. So it would require patience. So that's one potential option. Another option that we've talked about is a reschedule. Um, either for the fall, I believe, is what we talked about last time. Um, there are two potential weeks that uh, this trip could be rescheduled for. One of them is September 22nd to September 25th and the other is October 6th through October 9th. Um, there are some concerns that Mr. Santry and I talked about regarding a reschedule. The first concern is if there's a resurgence of COVID-19, we could be in the exact same situation in the fall. It's very difficult to know how that's gonna play out. A second concern is some students are no longer going to be with the Lunenburg schools. They may have gone to different schools or Monty Tech, and then that's a big coordination effort to make that happen. I think the biggest concern that we have is doing the fall trip means we're taking freshmen out of high school in the first month of their first year of high school, which after not having been in front of teachers for potentially up to 12 weeks. Um, at the end of this year. So there's a concern about the disruption to education that the trip might, might cause. Um, it's also a disruption to high school teachers who are trying to get you know, the basic rules and guidelines of their classes under control and then all the freshmen you know, leave. Um, the other you know, confusing point is then it becomes a high school trip, not a middle school trip. So who would be attending, who would be chaperoning? And I'm not sure there would be a lot of teachers who might want to chaperone, middle school or high school, who might want to chaperone that trip in the first month of school when they're trying to get themselves up and running. So that's concerning. Um, we did talk a little bit about what if we postponed until next June, but we have a similar issue there because that's taking the kids two weeks before final exams as the year is wrapping up. So 
you know, we're a little bit wary of the reschedule, but it is still a possibility. Did I miss anything, Mr. Santry? Uh, you covered it perfectly, Mrs. Raboyne. I would have to say, if I was asked for a recommendation, I would reluctantly uh, recommend a uh, canceling of that trip because the rescheduling of it seems like it poses many problems, including uh, time and learning for students in a brand new building with brand new teachers, which, which it would be difficult considering the COVID-19 closure that we're facing now. So the only question that I would have then is the non-refundable $250 that um, parents will be asking about because we understand the non-refundable $250 when you make a plan and one of you is canceled and you can't go and it's just an individual family person that can't go because something happens and they back out. But when you have something like this, it's 125 families that are not getting $250 back, it's $31,000. In total, if you, you multiply it by the 125 families. So they'll just want to know what that $31,000 is going to. Sure. And I can't really answer that question, although that we, uh, Amy and I have looked into similar districts of the eighth grade trips and you know, what other agencies are doing. And it does seem kind of standard operating procedure that they are reimbursing except for that non-refundable $250, whether that money has gone to paying uh, employees for, uh, you know, getting these trips going or getting the hotel or the, the bus fare. I'm not sure how much of that cost is. I can't speak to that. I can just speak to what uh, the travel agency has said that they would refund parents. And I, maybe Dr. Burnham and I could possibly do a follow up on that $250, but that does seem like it's standard operating procedure for other okay. districts in this situation. Okay, I just wanted to get it out there because people will be asking, that would be the one question they're asking. Sure. Because it's such totally unusual, is. yeah, yeah. Um, the only, only districts that um, I know of that are reimbursing 100% are ones where the travel agency purchased, they have their own trip insurance. So they're able to cover themselves. That's the oh, okay. one district I know of. So, they have trip insurance. Okay. And that's one yes. out of one, one out of a lot. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Ms. Bertrand, Ms. Bertrand. Well, it was. I mean, it it kind of piggybacks off your question. One thing that Mrs. Raboyne commented was that the vast majority of penalties are being waived. So that's still, uh, I'm curious as to, that's a large chunk of money in, in coordination and perhaps that is what is deemed for the coordination aspect, but what penalties are not being waived on, uh, on the vendor side? I would wanna know. Airlines are, let, are being incredibly flexible. Um, hotels so i'm just curious many of the places that are are standard around and are are free in terms of entry so i just didn't know if anyone was able to follow up on um vendors that are not that are not yeah. waiting i believe um mrs merchant said the vendors that hadn't and i'm looking at her um piece right now she is, a lot of money's already been put out. She said there were a couple, the hotel um, and the bus company are not yet refunding all of the penalties. From what I understand, many of the travel places, airlines and such aren't reimbursing. They're simply rescheduling or giving you sort of like a, you know, an IOU for that. And then there are other expenses like to the the t-shirts and everything else that's been done. And I believe that, um, and again, I don't have itemized numbers, but my understanding is that that $250 covers all of the pre-work that the travel agent has been doing for the last year. So it's paying her, she's been coordinating this since last May, um, as well as any minor penalties and thing, losses that she's gonna get hit with, which I don't have an itemized list. Does anyone else have any questions? No. No. 
Wendy, you have to take a vote. You have to take a motion. I'll make a motion to cancel the DC trip. Could I, could I make a request? This is this is um, Wendy Bartram. Oh, could I make a request um, that somehow we're there is able to get the most concise um, uh, information and able to lay it out to parents in a letter because just I think Chairperson Soroka had a good point in that that's a large chunk of money for parents to lose and and I think overall looking at the pandemic situation and seeing so many different vendors be flexible um, and and you know not charge penalties it would just be great to be able to give the most um, the largest amount of information to parents so that the understanding is clear. And maybe people are fine. They may be fine about the, the loss of the deposit and say, hey, you know what, that's how it goes. Um, but since we're looking at a cancellation versus a, a schedule. The only other, yeah. I think I agree, Wendy. I think that it needs to be laid out. I think also um, I did. I did, I thought I asked um, for some stuff to be presented with this. Um, what you know, she's a travel agent. What is her exact fee when you sign her contract with her? What is the percentage that she gets of the entire? Um, I know that they work on. They get fees. So I was just wondering what her fee was when we used her, because I think that parents will be wondering that. Going forward, maybe we need to find a travel agency that does have trip insurance for the possibility of this happening again in the future, because um, this is a very unusual, it's just unusual times for everyone. Um, so, and um, crediting and, and rescheduling, it's hard. It's hard for everybody. And it is gonna be hard for some people to swallow the $250. Um, just in general, there are low income, you know, I just think that some people are not going to be happy if we don't have a really good reasoning behind the $250. Um, people have been asking about the trip and how they're going to get their money back already. So I'm just, I'm, I, I just think we need to have a really well written answer for them when we send this email out that says it was canceled. Um, and that money, where, where that money, the $250 from all of these people is going. Um, I think that people will be asking that question. Uh, this um, is this is Jim. Heather, I agree with you. People are gonna ask the question, but that's not really our, our, our answer to give. Uh, we had a, the, the parent signed a contract for a $250 non-refund. Unfortunately, that's, that's the way it is. I don't know how we can answer that question for the travel agent or anybody else. We can ask them for that information, but I don't know how we can provide that as an answer for as the, as the school committee or as the school. You, oh, we can ask it from the travel agent and include it in the in information that goes home to the yeah. families about DC. That's all. I. That's not for us. For that, just for the right. families that are going that are going to get the email. Yeah, uh, that's. Uh, I yeah, think if we can get the if we can get an answer, we can certainly ask. Yeah, uh, yeah. But what's yeah. going to happen is that we're going to take a vote tonight. Right. It will hit social media within. Two, yeah, two, yeah. two or three minutes of the vote um, well before anybody has a chance to write a letter. Right. Or to get that answer from the travel agent. So while I agree it would be nice to have that information, I don't know that we can delay a vote to provide that information. Oh, no, no. I don't think we should delay a vote. Oh, no, that's not. I don't think Wendy was suggesting that. Either. No, I'm not suggesting okay. delaying the vote. It was a request. Oh. It was a request so that when written information is sent to families. The they have all the relevant figures that we can give them as to how and why. Yeah, the data that backs up this, why they're not getting the right. Yes, right. So that they're right. not they're not going back and asking questions. Uh, uh, like, what will happen if we don't send out all this information? That Mr. Santry is probably going to get a whole bunch of emails asking the same question. So it would be good to have the answer 
to go along with the announcement. Um, just it to avoid that. Good. Yeah. That rescheduling. I don't we have no the timing idea. of getting that. Right. That's the, yeah. So no, Wendy, and I don't, I don't think Wendy was suggesting we, we No, I was not. Oh, no, she just, no, not delaying a vote. Just, just giving as much information and for families to know that, that the school, um, you know, did everything in their power to gain as much inv yeah. um, information and advocate for, you know, as, as much of a refund as possible. And I don't think it's inappropriate to ask for an accurate accounting of where that money's going. And, and I don't think anyone wants anyone to work for free, but we also no, don't, don't want anyone, mm -hmm. we don't want anyone profiting from a situation like this too. We kind of just want to, you know, have a net Correct. zero outcome where people just get the money back that, that we put in. And I understand the $250 non-negotiable or non-refundable. But like we've all said, this is uh, unprecedented time. So I, I think asking yeah. for that information is totally reasonable. Okay. So now, Wendy, you can take your vote. All right. Um, okay. I'm looking. So, so um, I'll make a motion, Brian Lehman. I'll make a motion to cancel the DC trip. This is Carol Ashambo. I will second that. We'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Levesque? Unfortunately, I think an aye is appropriate. Mrs. Bertrand? Aye. Mr. Leighton? Yes. Mrs. Ashando? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much for having that Thank information. Thank you, Mrs. Bertrand. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. You're yes. Welcome. Thanks Thank for your you. efforts. Thank you. Um, okay. Now um, to the remote learning updates. Um, I don't know how you're going to start. I'll give it to you, Dr. Burnham. Okay. So let me take a moment to unmute. Did we need to talk about any of the other field trips or is that the only one? Well, do we need to talk about, we can talk about the, yep. Gal Galapagos. Yeah. I always think of that as a summer field trip, sorry. There's Dawn, she needs to be unmuted. There she goes. Okay, Dawn. Hi, thank you for having me. Uh, Dawn Guerin here with the Galapagos trip that was supposed to go out in June of 2020. Um, you know, it was great a month ago and I had all the time in the world to just wait and see what's gonna happen, but nothing's really yeah. changed. So I did reach out to my parents this week and as much as they do regret the decision, they understand that it most likely is going to just have to be rescheduled to next uh, spring. Um, I would leave it to spring. I would like to leave it to spring at this point because depending on if my seniors are gonna go or not, which they'll be freshmen in college at that point, I'd like to possibly have some flexibility of whether we go April or June. Um, so I do have one of my seniors that are backing out. So I'm not sure if the other one's going to come with us or not. And so if she's gonna come with us, I definitely wanna stay in June. But if she's not, I'd like to possibly investigate the opportunity to change it to an April vacation trip. Um, okay. One step at a time. Okay. So yours is a reschedule though. It's not a cancellation. Correct. They, okay. they, are, they would rather have it rescheduled than ever have it canceled. They don't want to lose a cent and they, the kids, most of the kids are freshmen and sophomores now. So they'll, you know, they'll be ready to go by next June for sure. Okay. And it's still Galapagos. You don't need to change location, correct? Correct. No change? So I'm, okay. I'm just, I think at this point I'm requesting to, because uh, we are getting close enough now to make this decision. I have to let them, I have to let the EF company know by May 5th, I believe. And then we don't have another school committee meeting or you don't have another school committee meeting before that. So I think at this point we need a decision to um, choose okay. to reschedule it. Okay, so um, I need a motion to reschedule the Gal Galapagos trip to next June and perhaps April if none of the seniors, this year's seniors go. You would prefer April? Okay. Possibly, I need, so, need to investigate that. Possibly. Okay. I can make a this motion. Oh. Go ahead, Carol. Carol. All Wait, right. Who is it's making Carol. a motion? I think it's me. Um, this is Carol Ashambo, yes. and I will make a motion to reschedule the Galapagos trip to next April or June, whatever seems best um, as we get closer to that time. Yeah, this is Jim Levesque, I will second. 
Okay, all, we need a roll call. All in favor, roll call vote. Mr. Yes. Mr. Leitman? Yes. Mrs. Ashambo? Yes. Mr. Levesque? Aye. And Mrs. Shoka? Yes. Okay, thank you, Dawn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So now back, no to the remote learning updates. So I believe I, I'm muted all of the um, administrators. Okay. Um, Heidi is not unmuted. I don't see Heidi unmuted. That's on purpose. <laughs> Heidi doesn't want to talk? <laughs> Yes, How did I know Mr. Santu is going to have a comment about that? <laughs> there she is. Okay. All right. So, um, I, I thought the most impactful uh, way to explain to everybody what's happening with remote learning, what it what it looks like and sounds like, uh, really would um, be best coming from from the principals in each of the schools and the assistant principals as well. Um, and as part of the update, uh, Mrs. Hanscom can also give you an update on, on some special ed elements as well. So which, which one of you would like to start? All right. So oh, we'll no, Christina, no, Christina go ahead. Might as well go we'll from start, the bottom. We'll start with the primary school. So this is, um, uh, we're gonna share a screen, right, Mrs. Gurton? Yep, but you gotta disable, I don't know if I can, I'm trying, but it won't let me. You disabled me from sharing the screen, it says. Oh, sorry. That's on purpose, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> no, still not letting me. It should be now. All right, let me try. Hold on. Oh, we go back. Hold on, hold on, hold on. OK. OK, here we go. <laughs> All right, so hello, oh, wait a minute, hold on. Let me see if it'll let me, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to make it one big picture here, but it's not letting me do that. Oh, I don't wanna share it, I wanna present it. There we go. Go to view to present, yeah. Yeah, I got it, okay. So hello everyone, thank you so much for, um, I hope you can see it. You might have to move yourself yep. around a little bit. Um, uh, we're calling it the day in the life in our homes for the remote learning. So our first, the first thing I want to show you is that we're doing morning announcements. Not only are the teachers doing them in their classrooms, um, we're doing them. I'm not going to give you my whole five minutes, but I will kind of show you. Uh, <laughs> you get sick of listening to yourself after a while. This took me two hours only because I had to make a board and it was, it was just a few things. I'll give you like a minute of it. Your audio isn't coming through, Christina. Yeah. I know, I don't know why. Hold on, Oop. Oop. let me go back. How come the audio is not working? That's what I don't understand. If you anyone... uh, so if you unshare and then go back in and share, it'll have an audio button on the bottom and it says share audio and you okay. have to click on that. The audio button, wait. Annika, wait. you want to step in? <laughs> It's a, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, under speaker, click the green share, and then when you get the blue share icon underneath that, you'll see sound share. It says share computer sound. Got it. Look at that. Okay, I'm back. Now, now I'll try again. All the learning that's happening. Good morning, everyone. Here we are today, first week of our full week yes. of remote learning. We're gonna to start today out by saying the pledge. We're gonna to get to do these morning announcements a couple times a week. So here we go. Let's put our right hand on our heart. We're going to face the flag and we're going to begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now we're going to say, our patriotic song for today. So I won't bore you with all of that, but this is Kevin. 
And the day that I did this, Kevin's mother sent a picture of me actually doing this. So it was really cute. All right, moving on. <laughs> These are our free schools. Did, I, did everybody hear everything that we just did? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so these are the preschool, this is the preschool, and they yeah. have been on scavenger hunts, and they're doing some writing and labeling and some math, and this little guy is making a butterfly. Can you see the butterfly with his snack? So um, that was a pre-K. The kindergarten, oh my, look at them. They are writing and making pictures and telling us that he has a bunk bed and he has a Harry Potter sheet, just in case you want to know what his bed looks like. And these little guys picked listening to their teacher's read aloud recording for their bedtime story instead of having mom read them a story. This is first grade, getting it done. They're doing a lot of writing, some organizing, some math. Um, very excited about all their work in first grade. Mm -hmm. Second grade is doing a lot of writing and some math, and I'll show you a few uh, on a couple slides later, some of the math that they're doing. They're making a book in this picture in the middle, and then some of the work they're doing is really based around, you know, writing to mom, writing to people in the home, and he's telling you a little bit about um, his book and uh, what happened. And today he broke the I have... This is really cute. Some of the mu some music people, um, I mean, in the a music class, the music teacher taught them a game. What I love about this is then he even got to play it online with another student. So it was really, it was really fun. And then some art projects, and I'll give you a little blurb of this. This is cute. <laughs> Getting a little movement in. <laughs> So that was cute. This is great. I'm going to give you just a blurb of this, but this was so funny. The first grade team got together and talked about making math tool kits, like boxes at home, so that they could use that for their math. So I'll give you like a minute of this, but it, it's really cute. Hi, boys and girls. This is your first grade team coming to you live from home. <laughs> I yeah. Say hi, everybody. Hi. Everybody. Today, we're going to build a math toolkit. And you can use whatever you can find at your home. I'm using a cardboard box that I found. I'm going to use a gift bag to hold all my math tools. I'm going to use a shoe box to hold my tools. A basket works great for your math tools. I found a bowl that I can put mine in. I'm going to use a to put mine in. I'm going to use a Ziploc bag. You're going to want to add counters to your math toolkit. I'm going to use macaronis for my counters. I'm going to collect 20 of them. So as you can see, they, they find different things throughout the house. And then all of the kids are putting little um, math tool bags together to use for their math classes. All of this is a lot of teaching. Um, a couple that were amazing is this picture over here to the right has got um, Mrs. Raffaelli. And she is, oh my God, she is doing, she took her whole wall in her house, I'll show you quickly, and made it her classroom. Hello, K6. I thought it would be really fun for us to try a virtual morning meeting and do some of our math jobs. So if you look behind me, I have a message and I have a calendar that I made and a spot for us to record some tally marks, the weather, the temperature, and here's our weather graph from school. I started filling it in from last week. We should start with... This next one is just a math lesson, all remote, teaching right, right through... Uh... Hi friends, today we are going to be talking about creating a tally chart, bar graph, picture graph, and line plot. You're going to want to put your name down in this box down here, just like I have already done. Don't. Yeah, don't say our data today is going to be looking at favorite food. I asked students what their favorite food was, and here are the results. 
You might want to take a piece of paper right now and write down these numbers. Pizza, nine books. So, and so there's a lot of, in the next page, many, there's a para doing some lessons. There's a second grade teacher. Um, and this one right here, Mrs. Um, Savelle actually used her daughter in it where she was reading a story. And I'm gonna show you what, how she implemented that into a full PowerPoint a little later. And over here, we've got Mrs. Um, LaValle doing a full um, lesson, lesson on ones and tens. <laughs> Yes. Next is, is the best part, and these are the kids. Um, I'm going to let you hear a couple of these because they are absolutely priceless, and their parents um, were, were working so hard. So I'll go through a few of them, maybe like three or four of them. So let me just start with, this is a first grader. Hi, Miss O'Valley. This is my monster. He was calling her judge. We're making a vampire. It's really scary. Me and my dad made it. I miss you, Mr. Valley. I hope I see you soon. I believe you. Hi, Mrs. Chap. Um, here are the questions. Um, well, here are the um about the crayons. So, um, the wax is non-toxic. Um, the the crayons are mostly done by machines, and um, they glue the wrapper before they put it on the crayon. Hi, Mrs. Chat. One more. My favorite part was in the book um, that when the bear gave the, the stinky bear gave the bunny a hug and when they shared the water at the end. <laughs> a lot of the families have sent us some, you know, just like thank you so much and, you know, really great comments about some of our teachers saying how supportive they are and engaging. Um, I love the one. Thank you so much for a great week of learning and keeping a nice balance of activities. We had a really good balance of work between online and offline activities. It has been a manageable amount of work in that it is not too hard, but also keeps Ashley nice and busy. The ones down the bottom with the thank you so much and um, oh God, very helpful. We had sent them out. Um, the Google Classrooms and how to get on and what to do. I This is very, very, very new for the primary. Um, teaching this way and for parents on the other end to learn Excellent. how to manage all of the um, Google Classrooms and how to get in all of them. So I, it was great to get the feedback to know that they were getting on and they were really enjoying um, what they were doing. Um, we did some resources for families. You know, this is one that I had shown you when Karen was on, Mrs. Savelle, and her. She does a whole PowerPoint on kindness. So even all of the people that are that are those those I call those real amazing bookends, all those extras that help all of our students. She did a beautiful, um, you know, blurb in here, used her daughter in a story to talk about kindness. And she's done about probably about four or five of these videos. So they're really good. Um, and the last thing that we had was um, from Mrs. Gothier, who has been um, really helpful in the means of technology for everyone. This is a Google Doc that I shared with all of the parents and families and this way they could go right in and this was the one that was oh gosh that was so helpful thank you very much where they could actually go in and learn and on to, how to get on to google and what to do and what they needed to do so that was um some great stuff that that we were able to do and kids are having a, a great time um and i was really i'm really excited about all the learning and all the hard work our teachers have done and our paras and uh, i can't say enough so I don't know if anyone has any questions about anything. I'd, I'd love to answer them. I can't see any. Okay. Does anyone have questions? Um, committee? Have any questions for Mrs. Curtin? No, no question. Uh, this is Jim Lovett. No Jim. question really. It's just I'm, I, I'm yeah. very impressed by what I just saw okay. and how quickly, you know, the, as you said, this is really new to the primary school. And everybody stepped up, and, and it was uh, it was really neat to see the kids 
and uh, interacting with the with the mm -hmm. teachers that way. So thank yeah. you. You're welcome. And in uh, the one with a little boy, and he what he what he was talking about and saying how he was like miss they miss us. It's just hard for me. I watch these and I get so teared up because I know how much they miss us and we miss them and it's it's so hard. But we're making it so that we're in their homes and we're there and I think they feel a lot better this last you know, seven days, so I'm really excited. And Carol, I'm sorry, I think you had something. I was just blaming the dust in my house. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I just wanted, I was gonna say something similar to what Jim said. I, it's very overwhelming for teachers to be able to figure out all this technology and very overwhelming for parents to figure out how to integrate this technology into their day. And it looks like you've done it in a way that isn't too overwhelming for the parents to figure out. Because I know it's, I, I have grandchildren that are this age and it's very difficult. Just to keep the login straight yeah. is huge. Yeah. So looks like a very good job is being done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all my, my staff too. Thank you. Great job, Brian Leighton. Uh, I want to thank you for the presentation. I thought that was great. Um, I love the coordination of the, the first grade team. It definitely looked like they were practicing that and got that down. Uh, I, went, I was wondering, Christina, if you could speak a little bit about the, the team collaboration and, and meeting you know, while they're not teaching. So it's funny you say that. We have a lot of Zoom meetings. Um, the grade levels meet every week and sometimes they meet even more. Together they make these kinds of um, videos to send off to families. They also do different, um, you know, they'll take turns on things. Some will do a math, some will do a, a read aloud, um, some will do a science. So they're kind of breaking that up. Um, the special ed teachers are involved with, they all have their own classrooms and they're also aiding these children as needed and helping families. Um, we meet as a staff once a week and there's still like our Desi grant meeting with the writing meeting, uh, writing grant that we have with the state. We're still meeting on that. So like I have a schedule of um, meetings daily that many teachers are in. Um, they also have to do a lot of planning and they, it, I can't believe how long it takes. Like you forget, it's almost like that first year teaching. You have to go all the way back to the beginning and start like slowly. How am I going to roll this out? How am I going to get to the end? What do I need to do to get there? So I think it's a lot of collaborating. And I can say that the staff to me has really gelled and they are so willing to help each other. Where I'm even on at seven o'clock at night with some of them because I'm trying to find things and do things myself. And I'll say, how do I find that? So I get people to Zoom with me and we go on together and we split screens and we ask questions. So I think that it's um, showing a lot of um, teamwork, which is really amazing. And built, we've built more than community, I feel, in, in a far away you know, distance. So I can say that there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes, I'd say, yeah. Does anyone else have any questions or comments? Wendy, you're on mute. <laughs> Wendy, you can unmute Wendy. Yeah, there you go. So one thing I wanted to point out, a little bit unique to the primary school and, and to, to complement the flexibility that seems to be happening there because students at the primary need some adult assistance, you know, accessing their work and, and just even to get, you know, to get onto their devices. Whereas, you know, elementary age and above, many of them, you know, can do that already. I'm sure some students at Turkey Hill still need some help, but they're just a little, a little more independent. And I know that um, some of the Zoom meetings at the primary have, have taken place at different times, say in the evening, to accommodate, to help support families who themselves are working during the day, parents and caregivers, so that they can help their children, um, you know, access their learning. So, you know, that's another level of, of flexibility and commitment that's, that the primary school has had to put in as well. So, incredibly well done. Thank you. Yeah, very impressive, very impressive. A lot. And it says you, they, they are all going back to the basics of first year teaching, do redoing plans. This is amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. It's good work. Good job. So, 
Are we going to move to the next level? Is that okay. Turkey Hill then? That's <gasps> Turkey Hill. I'm ready to go. Ready. All right. Let me try to share my screen with you and start my slideshow. There we go. All right, so remote learning at Turkey Hill Elementary School, the new normal. Um, you know, we've had seven full days of it. And I would say, as you've already mentioned, that the elementary school was a little bit better prepared um, in terms of many teachers did have Google Classrooms. Um, there were a couple who didn't. So that wasn't a huge shift, but moving everything to a remote learning platform is really, <laughs> a remarkable amount of work and, and uh, teachers have done a pretty good job. So what I did is I just kind of dipped into different classrooms to show you some different things. So I'm going to start with myself because um, I do morning announcements every day and I had to think about if there was some way that I could connect with kids on a daily basis. Um, so I start with a little morning announcement. I'll just give you a quick clip. Good morning, Turkey Hill Elementary School students and staff. Today is Wednesday, April 8th, and welcome to remote learning. Um, so I, you know, mine's just a little two minute video. It takes me about four tries to get it even <laughs> remotely correct until I don't care anymore and then I just do it. Um, I include a couple things that I'm, that I'm hoping will, will draw kids in. So I do a joke of the day. I was going to do one for you, but Mr. Santry strongly suggested that I not. So I'm not going to do my <laughs> joke. Um, I also have a, a word of the day and the kids, um, I, I give the word and the definition and they, they make a sentence for me about it. And then we do birthday shout outs, including um, this week, the birthdays that, that we missed last month, right? So we're trying to cover those as well. So um, this is a little uh, note that I got today um, regarding the word of the day from one of my friends. Um, the word was delicate and I just, his picture, I, how could I not include that? It was awesome. I was so pleased to get that from him. Um, we, you know, the Google Meets is the new forum. And in one of our classrooms, the teachers actually set up a, um, a how-to for this. So I'll just show you a few Morning, seconds. Morning, boys and girls. Mrs. Margaret and I just wanted to make a quick video to show you some how-tos for Google Meets. We know that we ran into some issues earlier this week. So we just wanted to make sure you knew how to use all the different features. So when you first enter into your meeting, you're going to make sure that you mute yourself, as we have said before. All right, so just like all of you getting used to the Zoom platform, we're all getting used to the Google Meets, and so I thought it was particularly helpful that the teachers were willing to do a, a how-to video for kids about that. So this is an example of um, an ELA grade five assignment from Mrs. Connery. Pretend your main character's entire life is burned up, turned upside down. Obviously, we don't have to pretend too much. So suddenly one day a pandemic hit and you're no longer allowed to go to school. Um, write a narrative about what this person's life is suddenly like. And that might seem like um, a pretty obvious prompt, but what I wanted to show you is, you know, she's all about it, right? So she does a, like a, I think it's a 30 minute lesson. And so I'm just gonna give you a real quick clip from that. Oh, wait a second. Try it again. Remember your characters, the ones that they face, the problems are gonna end up later on becoming those themes. What lesson did that person learn and what in the story happened to make them change. That's what you need to be thinking of when you're writing these. So you can see a lot of teachers brought their whiteboards home, very seriously laying out all of the elements of their lessons and learning to record themselves for students. Um, parent feedback, we've gotten um, quite a bit actually, uh, considering we've only been at it seven days um, and very positive. They, parents are all in right they they recognize what a what a shift in growth this is for all of us and they're doing their very best to participate um this is uh, you know th that's the other part of it is how kids submit their work so via uh, via different apps or photos or google docs they're um they're chiming in with their stuff that's an art project 
Here's a, a quick um, real world application from- I was looking at this picture, I thought, wow, what a perfect figure for us to practice using addition to find total volume. Because our school, Turkey Hill Elementary School, is made up of a bunch of rectangular prisms. First, we've got this rectangular prism over here. This is your cafeteria over so, I, you know, just trying to, I think teachers are working hard to think outside of the box and find things familiar and, and, and engage children um, with math. Some more shout outs from parents. This one that I had to share because it just made me laugh. Miss Latendre was trying so hard, you know, she wanted to do this very cool thing, and it was a it was a project, an app called Freckle, and it, if you look at the end, it's it's really simple, right? Remember when it prompts you have to enter your name, it's first name, last initial, so it seems straight up. But here's the stream of student responses. Um, I don't think I can do Freckle. What's the code? Freckle does not like my name. Uh, it gives the code <laughs> and she says, just first name, last initial. Okay, I understand that. I, I can't get on Freckle. Are you sure I have an account? I can't get on Freckle. This is Tony, do you just watch the videos? Is there a she for that? It's just my last name is spelled incorrectly, even though I spelled it right. I don't know what happened. It's your first name, <laughs> last initial. Like, I just... <laughs> I thought that was great, right, to just demonstrate for you because teachers have been commenting on this, like, holy smokes, the stream of comments that we get from kids. <laughs> the same questions over and over again. So I wanted to show you that. Um, this was a little video that actually one of the paraprofessionals Mrs. Henry did for the Achieve students. I'll show you a quick few. Oh, did it again. Get back to it. A quick few seconds. So I just wanted to give you guys an update today and show you how much bigger the caterpillars have gotten. So in, you know, they're trying to have this project and share with the students on a weekly basis or every few days checking in about the caterpillars and, and what they're doing. Third graders, obviously, the, the very first thing they need to do is just learn how to check in. So your name and your homeroom number and, and checking in, how are you feeling today? And the teachers are trying to get them to do that in a consistent way. Um, and again, here's third grade comments over a math paper. Number three, six, and 10 were a bit tricky. Number three and four were hard for me. I got most of it right. I got most of it right. I got almost all right. I said hexagon instead of pentagon. Good job, good job. So like, both the teachers, regular and special ed, ed jumping in. Uh, I learned not to measure on a screen because I got the measuring parts wrong. Good mistake to learn from. <laughs> so again, sort of that third grade stream of consciousness happening there. Some more lovely parent feedback. Um, this is from different grades. PE class, she's having them keep logs, giving them all sorts of choices about what they can do. And oh, I had to show you this because it's fun. This is a kid who submitted their Back. After the meeting, you guys can all go home and try this. <laughs> the handstand challenge. Oh my. You can push wow. something on TikTok. Yep. Wow. <laughs> Um, just a clip from um, Mr. Blankenship's music um, lessons for the week. You can see he embeds all sorts of videos in there. Um, and again, student work submission. One student was inspired to give a whole little uh, slideshow about the saxophone because that was what the music work was about. And I'm just going to finish up with a quick clip of um, Mr. Smith. Ronald, said Elizabeth, your clothes are really pretty. Your hair is very neat. You look like a real prince, but you are a bum. They didn't get married after. So, that's the end of the paperback princess. And so I'm thinking maybe a, a theme presented itself here. 
So he's talking about theme. He did a read aloud, read the whole story out loud, had quite the conversation with the students about that. Okay, so that is the end of my presentation. Mr. Santry, I think I went a little longer than seven minutes. I apologize. Are there any questions for me? I, I just have the same comment as I had with, with Mrs. Gerton. That uh, it's heartening and very <laughs> impressive. Thank you. On behalf yeah. of the team, thank yeah. you. Anyone else sure. have any questions, comments for Heidi? That was amazing, Heidi. We're doing our best. Wendy's, Wendy needs to be Wendy's muted. Young. Unmuted. Thank you. Why is Wendy muted all the time? Wendy. My dogs bark a lot. Oh, that's why. Okay. <laughs> so, um, Mrs. Champagne, are you finding, is there, was there a huge difference between grade three and grade five? Or how is grade three accessing everything? Are some of, is there some independent work? Can they be mostly independent? It's just, those are, that's a big leap there between grades three and five in, in their, I would think in their ability to work independently. Yes, exactly. And, and grade five certainly had more familiarity with um, Google Classroom yeah. and there were, you know, a few teams that were using it quite consistently. In grade three, they'd all been introduced to it, thank God. But, but it's the consistency of getting them to go on every day and to, you know, sign in and, it, and their name and then to access the work. That is a much steeper learning curve. And I know the third grade teachers are working very closely together to make sure that they're all giving out the same uh, expectations and instructions and lessons and, and really combine online and offline learning for those kids um, so that it's not overwhelming, especially for parents. Thank yeah. you. Well, well done. Well done. Thank you. Brian, do you have any comments or questions? I just no, have Carol. The, Oh, Carol. Okay. I just have the same <laughs> comment that, you know, a lot has been accomplished in a very small amount of time. And um, we can tell everybody's working really hard and doing a really good job. I'm sure they'll, they'll really appreciate hearing that. Thank you. Brian, did you have? No, great job. Thank you. Okay. So, Mr. Santry's up next, correct? Yes. So <laughs> we're going to uh, time seven minutes. I didn't know it was seven minutes. Uh, it's yeah. We kind of <laughs> joke about that. So, Miss Champagne, I've said this before. I'll say it again. You are a tough act to follow. That was a great presentation. Thank you. So um, remote learning at LMHS, I just wanted to kind of preface this with just some information. Once I'd like to thank my administrative team through this last three and a half weeks. What an unbelievable crew of people to work with, uh, just to collaborate and throw ideas around and to work together. Just an amazing group of people, whether it's 7 a.m. Uh, pounding out an email or whether it's 9.30 at night in front of the computer always willing to help and get the information out there to put students first. I'd also like to thank our faculty who absolutely have taken a platform that did not exist three and a half weeks ago and create such a quality product that I'm gonna give you a little bit of a snapshot here um, to take a look at. It is incredible. The work that they've put in, I, I just would like to give them thanks for that. Um, just to give you a little background about our remote learning platform, we have 80 Google Classrooms at the middle school serving sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Um, our, our participation rate for the first uh, week and one day is hovering around 90%, which is a, a very strong number if you think about this remote learning platform just coming into fruition. Uh, with the help of our administrators and our teachers who have come up with a procedure and a process for reaching out to those families that who have not engaged in learning and a process for that uh, in order to get those kids up and learning. So um, just wanted to give you that little bit of background. So uh, as Ms. Champagne did, we tried to create a sense of normalcy with, you know, I come on every morning and do the morning announcements. Uh, 
in anticipation of my colleagues going long, I've kept all of our clips to about uh, 10 seconds. Just to give you a snapshot of how, um, how teachers are interacting and using this platform and how the different variety of ways that teachers are reaching out to students, it's truly amazing. So just really quick for this. So uh, I heard the camera adds 10 pounds, but I really <laughs> think that uh, working from home adds 10 pounds at least. So uh, that is going to be my goal for the uh, spring is to take that down a little bit. But. So then we have different grade levels that have created different student schedules, not in order for them to adhere to it perfectly because we know they might not have access to a Chromebook at different times during the day but more to let them know when a teacher is posting an assignment and when you're having additional extra help available and when are our live meets and when can I join on those and when can I do the question of the day and different things like that just in order to help structure the day for students. And this is just an idea of our eighth grade remote learning schedule. So I, I think as I go into this next slide, it's going to immediately play. So I just want to give you a heads up. This is our science, sixth grade science, Mrs. Clark. She is using the model of, um, of the Google Classroom as she is the facilitator on the side, providing directions and instruction for the sheet of or the body of work that the students are seeing at home. So I'm just going to click on that. Oh, it didn't go immediately. I think you got to share with audio, Tim. Yeah, and you're not in presentation mode either, so that might be why it didn't play. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. Sure it's real. What do I have to go out? Stop sharing. You gotta, yeah, you got to stop and then come back, yeah. back in with share with audio. I wanted to say um, about the moon phase journals is I've really been enjoying all of your comments and your photos. They're great. Um, if you could write in your name. Um, <laughs> is that working or not? It is. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'll yes. get full screen again. I wanted ah. to say. Um, about the moon phase journals is I've really been enjoying all of your comments and your photos. They're great. Um, if you could write in your name. Um, so as you can see, this teacher is sequentially going through aspects of her instruction as it's happening on the screen for students. And if they can't do it live, it's been recorded and then they can go back to it at a different time. So this is another. And for people that really want to do some project-based learning, um, you can build your own mini greenhouse with recycled materials around the house. And there's a lot of different options for how. Uh, that's Will Guerra, our eighth grade science teacher, who has some great YouTube videos that we're hoping uh, we're going to be able to showcase some of those, possibly on public access as we move forward to let the community know just exactly what level of instruction that students are getting. So this is another way in which teachers are um, communicating with students or where they'll, they'll pre-record a video in which they can watch at a time where they feel is convenient and then they go over to the platform which in this case is a flip grid in which they can record themselves in a private classroom piece and then submit that into the teacher and then the teacher can provide feedback on that this is Don't you phone so this is also, this is a document camera at home that a teacher is using after she has already recorded her instruction as they're going through a literary analysis of Langston Hughes. Uh, this teacher also provides, um, Viola Davis does a reading of this poem. So you can click on the reading of the poem. You can go through with Mrs. Whitaker through the literary analysis and see exactly how they are kind of dissecting this poem. Now. For I still know it, honey. I still climb it. And life for me ain't been no crystal stair. 
This is another mode of communication where one of our English teachers just presents a poem and then asks for feedback from the class in order to, they are providing what their reaction to the poem is and some pretty strong reactions and great, you know, one of our things was Socratic method at the middle school where kids are able to provide what they felt what their reaction was to the poem. So look at the different modes in the first three and a half weeks of how we're reaching out to different students at different times. It's truly amazing. Whoops. Hold it as Sorry. well. So I know. Did I skip a, a slide? I don't Very think good, so. Tim. Down 10 over right three. And look at that, there's my answer. Coordinate graphing at the eighth grade, step-by-step -step sequential process for students to Hold follow. as well. Once again, so they can do I a, know that it was down 10 over right three. And look at that, there's my answer. And I know you can't see it, but that's Amy over here on the side providing the instruction of right along with doing the problem. I don't know how I can go back. Was it right click back? Your arrow keys. On the side. Hold it as well. Yeah, so I'm skipping it. I this is um, Miss Ante at the seventh grade that does mini lessons that coincide with some of the um, lessons that she does in class. I'll just give you a little bit of taste. Hi, everybody, and welcome to my mini lesson on finding the area and perimeter of semicircles. Um, currently, it's sailing outside and very windy, so that's not too exciting, but it makes for a perfect time to do some math inside. <laughs> Here we go. Once again, this is kind of the true uh, Google Classroom of our citizenship, and I believe this is eighth grade civics, our new, our new curriculum. Oh no, what is this? One one piece is eighth grade, uh, a, the civic site, yes. an example of a, a slideshow, and the other is sixth grade social studies, a Google form. And I know our sixth grade teachers or one of our sixth grade teams is doing morning check-ins with each student by classroom. So. Uh, I mean by homeroom. So 930 is one homeroom check-in with all students, not mandatory, but if they'd like to go in and check in and see their teacher. I know that all teachers are doing a question of the day and it's kind of our way to track attendance. How are you feeling? What emoji describes how you're feeling? What's your favorite food? Just something to engage them to see if they're coming on and completing those assignments. So even our special areas with music, we're able to, you know, read music and uh, Mr. Sheldon is pro providing some uh, quality instruction through our Google Classroom platform. This is something our guidance counselors created, which I think is wonderful. And this was really uh, on the go from uh, close to our enrichment work, which is a Google Classroom for each grade level where our guidance counselors can check in with each and every student on the grade level. And actually we've identified some kids that have been anxious or you know, having a difficult time with this closure when we're able to provide them a little extra comfort or a little extra, um, uh, I don't wanna say therapy, but just an adult to be able to talk to. Um, and it's been a great screening tool Karma and Cheryl have just done an outstanding job of making sure that they're reaching out to all those kids. Here's our PE class, and I know Mrs. Therrien and Mrs. Rios have actually done a live yoga class for students, and they're continuing to look at different opportunities to get that physical fitness in during our remote learning. Seventh grade art, Mrs. Um, Warren has done, she has created an art studio where kids can upload their art projects so that they can be viewed. And this is probably one of the funnest ones. We had Spirit Week, so through Padlet on um, the Google Classrooms grade level that Karma created, we can go on and kids can upload different things. I think this was, what are you great at? We had one was Lunenburg Pride. Today was what you wonder about. So kids can go on there and post what they're doing. It's uh, 
different sixth, seventh, and eighth grades. Here's some of that community feedback that we've gotten. I've been principal now for 10 years. Just a, a wonderful feeling uh, to get the level of positive feedback we've had around this program and, and it just the sense of community that I feel from our parents um, of the middle school and uh, just uh, what uh, they understand what the process these teachers and we have go I've gone through. So this is just a sampling of some of those things that we have uh, received. So that's my presentation. I feel free to answer any questions or concerns that you had. Um, does anyone have any questions or concerns? Uh, I think we need to no. exit out of here. I can't see anyone. <laughs> Carol. I can see you. Yeah. Uh, well, I, just, I can see Carol now. Oh, well, I'm there. Um, I'll, I'll make my comment. Um, that's very impressive with all the different types of activities that are there so that any child with any specific learning strength um, can latch on to something. I also like the schedule because I think that some kids really need to look at something to give them that kind of direction. Very nicely done. Thank you. And this is Jim. I am like the daily check-in as well to kind of just to see how people are, are how the kids are doing um and it's interesting to see the progression of what's happening between primary school up, at least up right now through the middle school and how the sophistication mm -hmm. of the and use of the tools is used to enhance the the learning experience and so yeah, really I'm, very eye-opening Thank you, and I, I, I think because when we transitioned to our new school building in 2016, we, the, the technology that was readily available to us, that we started our training back then, so we were in a much better position in order to kind of, you know, roll this out with our remote learning. Our teachers are, you know, I was talking to Mr. McGrath and Mrs. Scott, around 95% of them were familiar with Google Classroom as a platform, so we're just continuing to build on that. Great job. Yeah. Now I'm. I think Mr. McGrath is experiencing some audio difficulty. Mr. McGrath, are you there? Yes, I am here. Can, hey, can you okay. hear me? Thank I'm you. I'm stepping back. I've done I everything I could to okay. test my uh, computer. I, I don't know why it wasn't working, but it's working now. So I'm Mr. thrilled. Mr. Scott and I were willing to jump in and, and uh, do the PowerPoint, but we're good. I, I know you. I know you would be. So thank you. Very much. <laughs> That's, I have great colleagues. So um, I do want to kind of echo what Tim said about working collaboratively with Dr. Burnham and the, and the rest of the admin team and also my staff. It's, it's been great. And we've, um, whatever needs to be done, and we've always kind of looked at that, you know, what's, what's in the best interest of kids? Do we need to talk at seven at night? Do we need to wake up at, you know, six in the, whatever we need to do. So um, one thing I would say to start, I'm, I'm very proud of my staff at how much um, they've kind of dived into this remote learning. Um, as, uh, as Tim said earlier, the high school was very familiar with Google Classroom because we were all one-to-one. -one. Um, but the amount of professional development that has gone on uh, with my staff of just searching out things, I don't know how to do this, and colleagues, help. one silver lining I can say from kind of this isolation, it's kind of ironic to say, is that we've actually had more collaboration, I feel, with my departments and staff, just sharing of um, best practices and reaching out, and we, we talked about that, my department heads have been fantastic through this, because we've talked about, you know, God forbid one of my staff gets sick, so working collaboratively for those uh, co-taught classes, all my English one, all my algebra one, all my algebra twos, um, because if someone was to get sick, we would need someone to step in because those, those students still have to be taught. So the collaboration has really been, um, you know, been wonderful. And, um, you know, the, the professional development that as a district um, we've kind of put together has been great. And just the PD that, that the staff has kind of sought out on their own um, there have been so many Zooms and so many just department meetings where, hey, I, I found this out last night. We need to talk. And so, um, you know, just uh, uh, constant phone calls at night with staff and, and how can we do this? How can we solve this problem? Um, I had one staff member make a comment to me like, 
solving a, you know, a, a physics equation on the board, which would have taken five to 10 minutes to show the kids. It was almost an hour and change of how to upload what he was doing to show the kids a step-by-step -step process on how to solve the equation. So uh, just a lot of different things that my staff has had to overcome. Um, and I'm going to show you some snapshots just like everyone else. Um, and Tim and I and, and, and Mrs. Scott, I have to thank Mrs. Scott for, you know, all the help with putting this presentation together. So we kind of worked on this as an LMHS group. So I'm going to be asking Tim to kind of, instead of him unsharing and then me sharing, uh -huh. we, now my slide's going to kind of just, I'm going to jump in right, right from here. So if you want to click over, Tim, that would be great. So this is a, a, an English assignment. Um, it's kind of overcoming adversity. Uh, and students are engaging with topics of storytelling and how storytelling can be used to overcome um, difficult times. So kind of, as you can see, there's a little bit of a theme of a lot of teachers um, kind of using this time to, to get thoughts from kids um, on what's going on. Um, if you want to click over to the next slide, Tim. Um, this one w was kind of creative. It, it's it's around redesigning and structuring schools. So obviously we've kind of had to redesign school in the past, you know, two and a half weeks where we are going to a completely new platform. So it's, it's another way of thinking, you know, how was school um, when it was under quote unquote normal circumstances. And this is an activity where students can kind of write about um, how they can um, design school and what problems they saw with school. You can click to the next slide, please. Yeah, happy Sandra. Monday, English uh, 9. It's the beginning of week two of remote learning. And you can kind of see here, which is the side-by-side, -side, you know, instruction that um, you've seen a lot of where, you know, and my clips are very short, but very similar kind of going through. And this is kind of the layout for uh, week one and if you go through it kind of tells you exactly what the expectation is going to be for the week um, and then there will be daily check-ins to see if there are any questions and you can see all the different platforms that are linked below um, and all the different types of um, learning platforms that are that are being used along with the rubric and the expectations for the work so you know this is in general what you're going to see from a lot of the the teachers and in the lessons um, so kids know right from the beginning, this is the expectation for the week. And then there are also going to be daily check-ins because uh, the biggest fear is you just get inundated with emails. Um, so if you have one spot, you know, one pretty much slide that you can look at to say, here's the expectations for the week. Then with the follow-up questions, it helps the students get organized. And Mrs. Callahan actually sent out um, kind of a student planner um, to help with students to try to organize um, themselves because it is, it is difficult. Um, you know, when, when things can just kind of get lost. So it's like a daily planner for students to use to help kind of organize what their classes are and what their lessons and what the expectations are for the week. Mr. Santry, you can click. This was a lesson I liked. It's, it's linked to a YouTube video around the Great Depression. But what I really liked about this lesson, uh, this is a history lesson um, that Miss Martin put together. It's, it's a lesson about the Great Depression and it's set up in like a menu form. And it just gives students a lot of choice. And this is one way to get kids, um, you know, really involved in the lesson by giving them choice. So, you know, you don't see all of it, but all the different choices that they would have to pick from, um, you know, this kind of allows students to own their own learning and have some say of what they kind of want to research. And then uh, one thing that Mrs. Uh, Miss Martin was hoping to do with this particular activity is they would choose one of the three choices um, and then they would do some uh, primary and secondary uh, source research and hopefully uh, when they did the writing they might get them away from the computer a little bit um, but I just I really liked the choice uh, aspect of this particular lesson. Uh, Mr. Santry if you want to click over buzz the different elements within it and I really want to have a discussion about the dropping of the atomic bomb so we may move forward all right now um so you know you can see that when those particular um topics come up like those really um you know heavy topics um the teacher will, will want to have discussion points around you know viewpoints and what your thoughts are around that um and that was, I think, Tim Click, but that, that the lesson was about that. And I was trying to engage the students with some of the questions on the side. Um, 
this is um, one area I would like to talk about because this was an entirely new platform for the math department. We have used Khan Academy in the past. That is a platform we were used to. Um, we did not have IXL at the high school. Um, that was a program that I was very uh, thankful that the, um, the IXL team uh, worked with me on when I called and said, you know, I really need to have something to help hone the skills. Um, and they gave it to me at a really good price that we all agreed to, which was free. Um, so that was, that was really, really awesome of them. Um, so um, I was so thankful and it's something, you know, it was, a, it was a good marketing tool from them because my math teachers do love it and they're using it to help um, kind of reinforce those skills that students need. And it's a program with algorithms built into it. The kids used it, um, they're familiar with it at the middle school. And the ironic thing with IXL is that the kids were pretty familiar with it because they used it at LMS but uh, the high school teachers weren't familiar with it. So they really felt like they had to play catch up and there was some professional development that they had to do uh, with a very quick turnaround to get familiar with this particular um, platform and they did a great job and it's something they're using. And my, my department head is certainly pushing to try to see if I can work a way to get it next year. And I said, you know, I'll, I'll, we'll see and I'll try to budget for it, but uh, we'll, we'll discuss that when the time comes. Uh, but there are some um, classes that we're looking at trying to help supplement for next year to maybe help with those math skills because with math, it is difficult when you don't have the face-to-face -face instruction. So we're trying to build something into next year's schedule to help students who might um, you know, need some reinforcement of some of those basic math skills for, you know, those students who struggle in math and might need help with passing Algebra 2 and Pre-Calc. So, uh, but IXL is, is a program that we're very happy with and we were very excited to be working with the company who uh, ended up giving it to us for English and math 9 through 12 for free for the remainder of the year. So that was a really cool thing and um, very happy with IXL. Uh, Tim, you can click the next slide, please. So this is an example of a teacher's home kind of converted into a classroom, as you can see the, the themes that have been going on throughout, you know, the teacher, I believe it was at the uh, primary or elementary school who turned their wall into a classroom. Well, this is kind of a bedroom that is now being converted into, you know, the whiteboard and where all the Google meets are happening and kind of the day, the daily instruction that's going to be going on. So, you know, this, this is the amazing thing that teachers are doing. Um, they've basically converted their classrooms, you know, into their home and they brought them into their home and they're trying to connect with kids to the best of their ability um, you know, using document cameras and using, you know, you know, Padlet and all these different um, teaching platforms. Um, so I just, I just want to say I am super proud of how hard staff have worked and I can't tell you how many text messages and emails I've received at six, seven, eight o'clock at night. And there are times I just have to shut down because I need a break. You know, I just, you just, but you're doing it because you know, you want to deliver a high quality curriculum and it's just, you're, you're nervous because you're doing something that's never been done before. So you're just, you're always on and your brain is always going. And I'm sure some of my colleagues, you know, I'll wake up and I'll say, I got to do this. Or I, I thought of this. And um, so I'm just, I just wanted to show you kind of what some of the, um, some of the homes now look like they're like remote teaching rooms. Tim, you can click the next slide, please. So this is um, getting into um, science and there are some really cool um, different things. Um, Mrs. Byrie had her anatomy class use Play-Doh uh, to build bones and hands and feet. Um, just some of the different differentiation and trying to get kids, you know, one of the themes with a lot of the teachers is that they're at the computer so long. So they're trying to come up with as many projects as they can do. So kids aren't staring at a computer. I know I've been getting a lot more headaches because I'm just on the computer all the time with emails and Zoom. So a lot of teachers are trying to differentiate to the best of their ability and give as many different options um, for kids to learn and, you know, get as many hands-on activities as opposed to just, you know, punching away at the keyboard. Um, Tim, you can, you can hit the next slide. Um, you know, another example, there's the, there's the Play-Doh activity that I had talked about. Um, she also used Padlet to have kids collaborating um, with technology to set up, um, you know, 
different activities and this was an activity where they had to kind of put up old photos um, of themselves and just kind of show the the human anatomy growth um, just a cool thing and she said she had a lot of success with, with kids uh, putting in their old photos and it was very cute and a lot of the kids had you know a great time at seeing their um, their their primary school photos and things of that nature we can click Tim uh, this is another example of trying to do as many different hands-on activities. Um, when we were, when we had the day where we had to get a few things, um, Mrs. Guerin did a great job of making sure all the students could get a hold of their plants, um, so they could then take what they were doing in the greenhouse for horticulture, and then taking those those plants home and caring for them at home. Uh, the next slide, please, Tim. Uh, this is foreign language. Uh, they have been doing, and um, there's actually some eighth grade material in here as well. Uh, foreign language. Um, one thing um, I wanted to say about foreign language uh, that I got directly from the department that is how collaborative the department has been at working together and sharing of materials. Again, I'll just highlight the the collaboration in this time of isolation, how collaboration has gone up. It's, it's, it's a wonderful thing. Um, and it's great to see because when you're sharing best practices, it just makes everyone a better teacher. Uh, Tim, you can click. And again, different types of activities that they're trying to do, you know, using Zumba and, and other different things, um, you know, just again, trying to get kids so they're not constantly on, um, the computer and just trying to do as many different activities as they can um, to get kids engaged learning hands-on activities but still um, but still learning okay Tim you can click this is an example of how a lot of staff have been setting up kind of what they're expecting um, the students almost like the, the daily calendar that helps even at the high school level, students can get overwhelmed. So even at the high school level, they need it broken down so they can pretty much know what they need to do. And of course, if a student really wants to be the go-getter, which they might at high school, they might finish Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday on Tuesday, and that's fine. But somewhere they, they, they need it broken down or they'll get lost. So this is just an example of a daily schedule that is used um, um, by the, the Unified Arts by Mrs. Um, uh, Giuliani and uh, Mr. DePerry. Mr. Santry, you can click the next slide. But for the most part, it evens off and you can see the drawing. The three characters that I'll be drawing will be utilizing, of course, our simple shapes, the square, the triangle, and the and Mr. DePerry, because Mr. DePerry is fantastic, he started his own YouTube channel um, to get kids to, you know, stay interested in the arts. Um, so many teachers have done things like this to to keep kids engaged um you know there's so many things i had to leave out because um i didn't want tim tapping his watch when i got to seven minutes so there's so many things <laughs> I, would love, I would love to highlight for you so it's re it was really hard the hardest thing for me was to condense this down but there are so many different examples of of teachers trying to engage with kids and i think you guys are all getting a great snapshot from the primary all the way up to the high school uh tim you can click the next slide um one thing that is, I am so happy that we were able to do, a couple years ago, we still use the old paper course selection sheet. Um, I wanted to get away from that um, when I became principal and I wanted everything to go online. I wanted students to register for courses online. I can't tell you how thankful I am that I did that because that's what we're doing this year. And I couldn't imagine trying to walk through students um, it's going to be difficult with eighth grade and ninth grade. They're going to need a refresher course. We're going to do some Google meets and do some videos on how to do that to help out the eighth graders and ninth graders so they can register for courses. But for the most part, I'm, I'm sure sophomores, juniors will know kind of what they're doing because they've already been through this, but obviously they can still attend the Google meets and all those videos that we're going to create. Uh, Mrs. Cavioli, the, um, the department head for the high school for guidance is I'm working very closely with her and Mrs. Scott to try to put all this together to make it as user friendly. Uh, Cause we still have to, you know, schedule the building and, and get kids um, with recommendations and, and get kids into classes that, that we need to get them into. So um, that is still ongoing. We're doing that and we're, we're on course. Um, so I actually, I'm, I don't feel, uh, you know, right now as rushed, depending on what happens, because I usually like to get a schedule in the hands of every student on the last day of school. But, um, you know, depending on what happens with guidelines and whatnot, um, I might not have that opportunity and they might just have to show up 
hopefully back in September, depending on what happens, um, that's when they might get their schedule. Okay. I'll be ready to roll with whatever we do, but the, the scheduling is, is ongoing and we'll, we'll get that done. Tim, you can click the next slide. And this is just an example of, of some feedback from parents. Um, there was other feedback, but I, again, I was just trying to, um, you know, narrow it down. But, you know, just hearing these, these thank yous are really heartfelt. I reached out to these families to make sure it was okay to use this. And they said, absolutely. Tim, if you want to click the next slide, that's just some student feedback um, on how things have been going. So... You know, it's really nice when you're working hard and, and that's acknowledged. And, you know, I, I um, it's, it, it's also nice that, you know, the students are feeling like there's been a lot of effort as well as the families, because that's really who we're working for is those students and those families. So um, it's good to hear that feedback and it's good to kind of acknowledge to the staff that, you know, yep, you, they know you're working hard, keep it up. Uh, because it was at times the staff was feeling overwhelmed. Um, they certainly were because it was a lot to learn in a very short amount of time. So, uh, Tim, I think that's it. Is there another slide? I think that's, that's all. That's it, Mr. McGrath. That's it. So, any questions? Does anyone have any questions? If we could unshare that, that would be good so we could see everyone. So, Brian Layton and here. Uh, thank you for the presentation. That was great. Uh, one question I had, and it might be more of the whole ad, but uh, when a student isn't doing anything on, online, you're not seeing any work done, at what point do you identify those students and reach out to the parents? So we have a pretty solid procedure at LMHS that we're kind of following as, a, as an entire school. Um, their first reach out is going through guidance because we want to make sure that everything is okay. Um, you know, the teacher will check in and then if the, the teacher doesn't hear anything back, guidance will then reach out to the student. Um, then it would fall on if, if, this, if the student uh, doesn't respond to guidance, then it would fall on one of the administrators to reach out either via phone or email because uh, it could be a number of variables why they're not able to access. Their Chromebook could be broken, they could be sick. I mean, there's a number of reasons. So we want to get to the bottom of it as quickly as we can because we want to help. Because if the student doesn't is having Chromebook issues, we want to make sure we get them in touch with our IT department so they can get on the schedule to get a new you know, Chromebook so they can access their learning. Um, you know, we would also, if, if we're not getting responses at all, we could certainly send the resource officer by the house to make sure everything is okay. Uh, but that would be, you know, probably a last step procedure, but there would be many different pitfalls. And of course, if the student had any special ed services, um, those liaisons would absolutely be reaching out as well. But we have a, a entire spreadsheet that Mrs. Um, Scott created, uh, which is helpful because it's all in one spot to keep track of how many times we've reached out, who've call, who has called, what day, what phone call, the times, the dates, how many times. Um, and then, you know, we are constantly um, gathering that data and, and hopefully we'll get feedback from the family in some way, shape or form. Because um, ultimately we just want to help. Um, you know, we don't want it to, that's why we're having guidance reach out first because we don't want it to seem like a disciplinary thing because there could legitimately be a reason why that student is not engaging in the learning and we want to try to help that student, um, whether it be a Chromebook issue or a sickness or a Wi-Fi issue or whatever the case may be. Thank you. Carol, do you have any questions, any comments? Um, I just would comment that once again, I'm, I'm very, very impressed with what's going on. I also was impressed by the thought that as difficult as it is to get everything running and building the plane as you're flying it, um, there, there was some mention of a great deal of thought going into what happens when things get back to normal, hopefully by the fall, and um, that Mr. McGrath had mentioned how they were going to work on reinforcing some of those math skills that would have been um, difficult to reinforce in this particular manner. So um, I have to say that, that I have to give them a great deal of credit for as difficult as it is to tread water looking ahead at the same time. Yeah, forward thinking. Um, Jim, do you have any comments or concerns? Um, no, I think that, that uh, I've heard 
it's been impressive, yes, all along. Um, you know, I think that there's probably an opportunity for us when it comes time next year in the normal world, maybe, uh, that we can leverage some of these videos that the teachers, yeah. Mr. McGrath mentioned, uh, it, it took an hour to get a, a 15 minute video uploaded. And that's something that we can leverage going forward um, and not have to recreate the wheel if if we need to, you know, say for additional help, you know, I've got a video for to show you for additional help, that kind of stuff. I think there's some opportunities there that we're maybe not seeing right now, but uh, overall, I think there's a, a great opportunity to expand the offerings and the, um, the abilities for our students. Yep, agreed. Wendy? I think it was just great to see at the middle and high school level, the, um, the attention to the social emotional um, well being and the connection for students like around the spirit week, because I think at that, you know, that for those students, that's, you know, that's another piece of the puzzle for them. Um, so it was great to see some attention um, put there and, and, uh, and to have students be engaged with that as well. Yep. And who knew that I remembered my uh, senior year geography from 35 years ago? But I've been I've been teaching geography this week <laughs> <laughs> on IXL, so I'm, I'm I'm learning. So we do have an update from um, Mrs. Hanscom for special ed as well. Great. Share my screen. Okay, so in addition to um, all of the special ed teachers and the paraprofessionals being a part of those Google Classrooms or having their own Google Classrooms, they're doing Google Meet sessions for small groups and one-to-one -one services. Um, and then behind the scenes, every special ed student will need to have a remote learning plan sent home to their families um, that will talk about what goals are being addressed through their IEPs and what those services might look like. And this is a requirement from the state that we have to do that for every special ed. My teachers are getting that together this week. Um, parents should begin seeing it today into next week. Um, and I just put down a couple of the examples um, of what those remote plans would include. So you see here, they've got the goals and objectives in this child, or the goals in this child's plan. And then here are some of the services that, this, that the teacher is utilizing to help address those. So the parents are really clear that even though we're not following the IEP grid services exactly, because we can't replicate that online, we are making sure that they're addressed um, through this remote learning opportunity time. And then here's another example here on this student has um, OT support, speech, and adaptive behavior. And then you can see here how the teacher is making sure the parents know um, how that's being addressed. Um, in addition to all of this instruction um, that's going on and the remote service learning plans, I think I did mention in our last meeting um, that I was presenting that we are moving forward with IEP meetings. Not every district in the state is doing that. We in Lunenburg have chosen to do that. So we're moving forward with some annual meetings um, and some reavals and initial meetings as well that, where the testing's already been done. Um, and that's been, that's been very beneficial. Um, I've had what I've done at the end of all of the meetings is I'm sending out a parent survey so we can get some feedback on that from parents to see how those Zoom meetings have been going. Um, and we've gotten some great parent feedback responses on, on the Zoom meetings. And in fact, some parents have even said that they like the Zoom meetings better than the in-person meetings because they feel like it's much more organized as far as, um, you know, we're really focused in the Zoom meetings on going through it um, and having the team members are all there participating, which has been very good. Um, and the only other thing that I wanted to bring up too, um, just to let you all know, is that we have created um, a parent website in special ed for the COVID-19 information and, and what um, LPS families need to know about, um, about special ed. And what I've tried to do, rather than emailing parents all of the time and telling them updates, I've, I've sent them two letters as of yet now and they're here on the website. And then I've also got some resources um, for them. I've also got the 
um, US federal links and our state links if parents have questions about that. And then I've got information by topics on what are we doing for their IEP services? What are we doing for meetings? Um, what about progress reports? What about MCAS? Um, or if your child's in an out-of-district place, what does that look like? So I'm really happy that we've been able to pull this together and have kind of a one-stop shopping for parents. So if they do have questions, they know where they can go to to find that information um, right away. And that's it from a special ed standpoint. Any questions? Wendy, question? Jim, no one? I, yeah, um, no, I, I, I was saying, I, I think it's great that you're reaching out to everybody individually as well. So thank you. Yeah. Wendy? And have you, um, has there been good success with the IEP, the Zoom IEPs? Fantastic. Excellent. You wouldn't even believe it. I like, I, I was really hesitant to get started with it. And so I offered up to my team chairpersons that I would, I would share the meetings initially because I wanted to really be a part of that process and be able to work mm. with some of those glitches. And then what I did that following week is I had the team chairs join in a meeting to see how I ran it so that we're all running them pretty much the same mm. way. And yeah. like I said, I'm, I'm glad I put that survey in place because some parents came back and gave me some great advice on how to tweak it a little bit. Um, even with security features before even the Zoom bombing went on, <laughs> come in um, and send me some um, information back on, hey, make sure that you check this off and make sure you, you have this setting set on it. So, cause some of our parents are more tech savvy than we are. Um, and so it's been, it's been really helpful to get that feedback from the parents. And like I said, 90 to 100% of them um, so far have answered that um, on the thing, on the survey that it, they strongly agree that it's been a great experience for them. Oh, good. That's fantastic. So maybe that's something you'll continue going forward. Zoom meetings with the parents. It might be more practical for them too, sometimes not to have to go to the school, yeah, but just have we've to. Always, we've always offered yeah. phone, phone conferences for parents, um, but, but we, I do like the interaction on the Zoom to still have the yeah. um, And we have even offered with parents if they don't want to do the face-to-face, -face, we can still be Zooming and they can participate and just turn their video off. Um, okay. Everyone has participated via video and audio, so it's been, it's been, it's been great so far. Just because yes, everyone's deprived. A, new, a whole new world, so to speak, for when we read yeah. what, may, what may, may, may make more sense for some families. Yeah. Excellent. And people are deprived of seeing other people, so they want to see everybody's faces. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Look, everybody wants to see everybody's faces. It's, mm -hmm. it's you know. So, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Kate, anything else? Yeah, I just want to say thank you to um, all of our administrators for pulling together a phenomenal presentation on, you know, what remote learning looks and sounds like um, just, a, just a week, a little more than a week in. Um, I just, I, I, I've been saying it for weeks, you know, folks have been working really hard. We're all learning. You could see uh, even this evening in the context of this meeting, how we uh, were learning from each other, <laughs> how to get the sound on the presentations. And um, it, it really is extraordinary. And um, I, I, I really do believe that this, um, this event forced a lot of change. And I think the change uh, has been good in, in many, many ways. And I think it, it really and truly will um, change the way teachers teach moving forward. You can't unknow what you now know how to do. Um, so I, I think that, you know, if and when we, we see a return to normal, uh, it, it's not going to look exactly as it did before which is not a bad thing. I think we've, we've learned um, some really effective tools for engaging kids and for working together um, as adults even. Um, so thank, thank you all. And you know, again, thank you to all of the staff um, who, who have done just extraordinary things in, in a short amount of time. It's really amazing to see. Yep, thank you.
Yes. So much for and thank you for your time this evening. Yes, thank you. Oh, seven minutes, seven minutes. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Only a guideline. <laughs> <laughs> It was too much wonderful to squeeze into I know, seven minutes. I know. You could have squeezed it in seven minutes. So mm. thank you so much. We appreciate all the hard work that you are doing. And it's so nice to see the kids engaged again. Right. Um, right. Real, like, I, one of mine has such structure. It's great. I love it. That's great. Thank yeah. you. It's good to hear. Thanks. Thank you. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. So now we're going on to reports we only have a couple uh carol finance committee uh they met last thursday night and the discussion well there was a lot of discussion but what was pertinent to us um the, the cash flow is okay through the end of this fiscal year it appears um they don't see any big problem getting to the to june 30th um representatives Hay hayes office is looking into why the money tech assessment was so heavy on Lunenburg and they're trying to schedule a meeting. They're continuing, continue to try to set this meeting mm -hmm. with um, FinCom, the Board of Selectmen, Representative Hay and Senator Tran to try and figure out what happened with the formula that we got hit so hard. Um, and then they also stated that the project at the Pasios building is on hold. Oh, okay. Thank you. Any, any questions for Carol come in school committee? No. 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 Okay. Um, so then it's capital planning. Jim, did you have a meeting? We were supposed to have a meeting today. We did not make the, uh, the timeline for the agenda to be posted. So it will be tomorrow afternoon okay. at 4 PM. Uh, it is an open Zoom meeting, so members can, uh, the public okay. can attend uh, as well. Okay. We will be talking about the um, possible changes to the funding of the capital plan mm. and to review the prioritization. Um, as everybody's aware, we're looking at the budget from fresh eyes again. Um, so this is part of that budgeting process that will probably result in some changes. In, uh, in in the capital plan that was approved earlier this year. Yeah, approved by capital planning board, but not town Correct. meeting yet. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Or it was recommended by, yeah. Right. Correct. <laughs> yes. And everything was funded at that time. Correct. So um, it's most likely not, some of the stuff won't be funded. It's very it, likely, but yeah. we'll see what the deliberations are. Okay. And the guidance from town manager. Okay, well, uh, um, so that's tomorrow at four o'clock and it's open to the public. Tomorrow at four o'clock, open to the public. The agenda has been posted. Um, it is not this Zoom meeting number, it's the other one. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And now um, we're on to public comment that is open to anything school committee related. Um, do we have any public comment from the, the committee? No? No. Any no. public comment from the public that's viewing? Do we see any hands raised? Yes. Mr. Passios. Mr. Passios. There he is. Uh, Dave Passios, 56 Whiting Street. Um, I just wanted to add a comment to the uh, discussion about the refunds on the DC trip. Uh, obviously, I don't have kids in the school district uh, at this point. Uh, my kids went through uh, a number of years ago. Uh, but I can remember as a parent that if uh, I made a, a commitment to uh, something like the DC trip and I had to cancel out or we had to cancel for unexpected reasons, uh, I would not expect a non-refundable uh, deposit to be returned. Under the circumstances that we're operating today and going forward, uh, I believe that the school committee or the administration should push really hard to get the uh, travel agency to negotiate something better than what they're giving us now or giving you now. Um, they're a small business. They're gonna be helped out by our tax dollars going forward to stay in business. Part of that will be reimbursement for losses such as these deposits. 
And uh, just because everybody else is accepting the fact that they're saying, no, we're not refunding it, we should be the one to uh, forge forward and say, no, we want it refunded and push as hard as possible for the citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Passios. Does anyone else have to see anyone else raising their hand? I do not. No. Okay, then um, we just need, we have another meeting planned. Do we have another meeting? Is it May or do we need another meeting before that? Uh, we've scheduled the um, budget oh, hearing. Yeah, what day did for, you, do we? For Wednesday, April 29th. The 29th, okay. At seven o'clock. Yes. So, yeah, okay. Um, so that will be our next meeting will be the uh, budget hearing on the 29th. And that will take up the entire meeting, correct? I, I don't foresee anything else on, on the agenda, just the okay. budget hearing. Okay. Um, does anybody else have anything to add? No? Okay, so I'll just take a motion to adjourn. Ryan Leighton, I'll make a motion to adjourn at 901. Wendy Burns. Second. Oh. <laughs> Toss it up. Who wants it? You can have it. Jim Lovick, I'll second. All in favor? Roll call vote. Mr. Lovick? Right. Mr. Leighton? Yes. Mrs. Ashambo? Yes. Mrs. Bertrand? Yes. And Mrs. Shroka? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs>